we had really, I think, shook the foundations of the of the the industry with AC1 when we introduced, you know, gorgeous looking game with these open world cities, you know, you know, seamless, no loading, and we've uh, we've done pretty much what we can do uh, with. Uh, you know the last generation right we, we we've taken both consoles to pretty much their their breaking limit so the initial project goal for ACU and the the, the name uh, spoils it a little bit it was to, to create the first fully and next-gen Assassin's Creed by blurring the lines between like single-player multiplayer co-op and uh, the purely online uh, element of uh, more social games. So narrative works when you're, you know, you're motivating the player on a very linear story, but when you create a rich open world with all these different activities, it needs to be more. We, we wanted to create a city that not only is super detailed, um, uh, you know, large and beautiful, but we wanted to have depth to that city. We wanted it to be full of characters, uh, full of NPCs, full of activities, and full of rewards. Uh, and we wanted to let the player loose in that universe and really let them explore and find that stuff on their own. I love being able to create brand new experiences that leverage the new hardware and so doing that on Assassin's Creed 1 was really exciting because we didn't even have dev kits really um, and we not only were creating a new IP for this new hardware that we didn't really know or understand yet, we were also building a brand new engine which ended up being an engine that's used throughout Ubisoft on a bunch of games. Um, and our focus was really, you know, what can we do on this hardware to change the gameplay experience for players? What can we do that's never been done before? AC uh, was built as a single player experience, most and foremost. So what we had to do is to make sure that uh, because we're building a sandbox and an open world uh, game, we needed to make sure to onlineize all of our different features and we have hundreds of them. When you're on a mission, we tend to control a lot. This is the opposite philosophy of what we did with Unity. The idea was to create a large, living, breathing, systemic city, let you manipulate that city, and then embrace that sandbox nature, even in missions. We've reimagined all three uh, main pillars. First one being navigation. So um, parkour will give the players more abilities than before. Control over uh, going up or going down, and and precisely selecting where uh, where players want to go. We've uh, reimagined the f combat pillar uh, altogether as well. I guess the fight system is a little bit harder than before, and that's that's also done on purpose to support the third pillar, which is stealth. So uh, all, all together, the, these three pillars they come together and they they, they form uh, they, they form the core the core gameplay loop of our game. It was a great uh, time to uh, do the same types of bets that we did on the C1 for a new generation change. So we, make, we looked at all of our workflow and make sure we made sure that uh, we could iterate as fast as possible. So we were able to focus on multiplayer afterwards. And on top of that, obviously, we were able to do some, uh, a big push on graphics to get a totally new experience. But we really wanted to focus on something that would take us back to the core of Assassin's Creed. So going back to a large, sprawling urban center. So we asked ourselves, if we were to go back to that route, uh, what would be the perfect setting to showcase next generation hardware? Well, Paris is the most visited city in the world. It's literally, I mean, teeming with, uh, with monuments. Uh, you can't turn a street corner without running into some sort of uh, 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 landmark. Uh, and then the period of French Revolution was a period of really of upheaval with you know hundreds of thousands of people taking the streets. So we're like, well, the crowd, social stealth is one of the core pillars of the brand. The large sprawling urban areas is another core pillar of the brand. So why not bring that all together and create a game set in that you know unique setting? So this is sort of how it converged. So you've got all the landmarks in, um, and these landmarks are incredibly huge. Like you know they're they're close to one to one scale. So it really feels like you're in Paris. If the city has literally tens of thousands of buildings, and if you can go into one in every four buildings, 
Every building is a potential story. Every building is a potential reward. Uh, and you really start getting a sense that the world is no longer a movie set. It feels like an actual world. The other thing we did is when, when you say French Revolution, well, there's the word revolution, that's more than a dozen people screaming, right? So you need to have large crowds. So we're up to about, I think, 5,000 NPCs on screen right now. And those NPCs, I'm not talking about like just people, like random animations. These are interactive. So if you, if you, for example, you, you, you do something that will startle them, like shoot a gun in the air and they're right next to you, they will bail, they will run away. So having 5,000 characters on screen just running away uh, is a feat onto itself, but it's something that we've been working on for a very long time. So suddenly we're in a big open world and a huge city. So the, uh, the idea is to uh, create opportunities for people to come together and have fun things to do in co-op. Uh, we're supporting four-player co-op and uh, we have tons of content. There's single-player content, there's co-op content, and also players can just explore the city together and experience Paris together, which is uh, really exciting. Our goal was to unify uh, what we were doing separately, which was multiplayer uh, and our, uh, our strong single-player experience into one single uh, game. That's why we needed to build uh, the right team and then really take our time to do that. Uh, we had a studio in Annecy, we had a studio in Singapore, a studio uh, in Quebec City as well. Uh, this year around we're still working with uh, these uh, major studios. We've added Toronto to our, to our list of partners this year. So we knew that um, Assassin's Creed Unity was looking for partners. They were in pre-production at the time and uh, basically Vince came over with a couple of other people and said hey this is where we think you guys can help us. Our role on AC Unity was bringing that knowledge of creating good co-op maps and co-op gameplay and applying that to the Assassin's Creed universe. In the past uh, we've worked on co-op but it was within uh, a much smaller scope in terms of the size of the world, uh, something that we call like broad linear level design where um, you do have opportunities to branch off and do different things but within a very confined space. We really wanted to steer away from that so what we think is if you make the world challenging enough, if you make the opportunities be easier or more logical to perform uh, by multiple players, if you then give those players comp complementary skills, people will naturally play co-op. So you have to really keep that in mind and uh, make sure that you design for every possible approach and for every uh, possible play style. Uh, some players might be more action oriented, you need to make sure that the fights on the ground are good and that the difficulty is balanced appropriately to encourage co-op. Back in, I think around October, I started talking to Vince about how, you know, Toronto, you know, since we're working on co-op and we know that they would probably need a co-op demo for E3, um, I said, hey, you know, um, Toronto wants to get involved. Doing demos is always taxing, but as I said, it's, it's part of the process. We have to do it. We want to do it. The way game development is, is, is done on this project is Montreal's in charge of all of the technology, all of the tools, all of the features, or most of the features. Um, and uh, specifically for the demo, we're kind of building the top parts of the layers of, of the content. So we're building, you know, the city, the, the levels, the mission, everything that kind of sits on top of the, the foundation of the, the technology and the, the features. So it, 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 we have to work together. Ultimately, it's, it's a good win for the team. And once we have it, we have a cool kind of cool of a, a cool benchmark. And then we can say, remember the E3 demo or the, the other demo? Well, that's, that's the, the kind of quality we need to hit for the, the rest of the game. What we talked about with the team was E3 is going to be a great opportunity for us to take something to final, take something to polish, and, and, and be able to, to know what that process is and understand how to work together and get there. For our E3 demo, we wanted something that would be very impactful in a short period of time. You know, we're going to be uh, up there on stage for five minutes and uh, we want people to understand um, the conflict, to feel the energy and to, uh, to understand the, the gameplay progression as well. So Alex challenged us um, you know, to tell, uh, tell the story of the French Revolution, you know, the, uh, the macro story of you know, the peasant and the noble battle uh, you know, in, uh, framed up um, within this mission. Uh, we were we were going to set up um, that uh, the conflict between the classes, you know, that really defines the French Revolution. In the French Revolution, today's um, um, extremists were tomorrow's moderates, and the next day they were dead. And, and this is this is what happened throughout the, the whole thing, right? So this 
uh, this lent itself really well to that uh, to that sort of uh, you know who is right you know what is freedom what is uh, control right and that sort of shifts. So the idea was uh, to really tell the story of what it's like to be a noble, you know, thrust uh, into the hands of insanely uh, violent and angry peasants. We're going to have to do that first person. And, uh, you know, AC is not a first person game, so it's really a jolting experience. So uh, we decided very early on to, uh, to go with a, um, a very classic conflict from the French Revolution, which was uh, the people versus nobility. And uh, we set the map, uh, the mission, around the bread riots that broke out early in the French Revolution. So you're going to see streets that are full of chaos and uh, under pressure, and that really represents the population that, we, that we're wading through and that we're climbing over. What the player's going to experience is they're going to see the difference between the social classes in terms of outside it's chaos, uh, there's barricades everywhere, uh, things are upheaved, you go inside, and all of a sudden, visually, everything is very organized, very formatted. So the mission takes place with, no, with um, uh, peasants breaking into a palace. The peasants are starving. Inside the palace, uh, the corrupt marquis is having a party. He's feasting. And there, there's this inequality, and you can really understand that as a player. And that's what we built the whole demo around. Take care of this, or I will use your head as a piss pot. So the nice thing is, even though we're spending a ton of time building this, this beautiful palace and, and the gardens and everything, we'll actually have that in game. And we have featured actually quite a lot of content um, which will be shipped in the game in that same location. Friday afternoon, we kind of got the call from Montreal and say, okay, we've cleared our schedules, why don't you and Natai come over, we're going to sit down, go through the entire E3 strategy and figure out how to get um, our two demos to complement each other, but as well as get your demo down to this five minute window. So um, we flew out Monday morning, spent two days in Montreal, uh, we scrubbed through everything at a super detailed level uh, and we found some really, really great solutions. Things can be tweaked. <clears throat> Sometimes uh, additional uh, hard decisions need to be made, but uh, usually uh, the, game, the game is pretty much locked. I mean, we know what we're building, we know why we're doing it, we know what, why we want to show publicly, and then it's, uh, it's, it's a matter of just finishing and then polishing the rest until we feel satisfied with the overall product. And, uh, we're proud to, to, to release it. <laughs> I wish everything was locked. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, we've been working on it for a long time, and that's one, one of the reasons I think why we're, we're going to see a lot of quality in, in AC Unity, but uh, it's not finished. Everyone on the team now is, is super excited that we have a demo, and, and no one's frustrated that, you know, we're, we're trying different things that we know may not go into the full game, because we're, we're already seeing the learning. We're already seeing how um, every time we iterate, we get better, we get faster. We are going to work on it until the game ships. And uh, I think you're going to see something at E3 that's going to be amazing, but the, the final game is going to be even more amazing. For AC, we decided to uh, invest a lot in mining. Uh, one of the main subjects that we attack is GI, Global Illumination, uh, which also includes sky occlusion. So we're uh, looking at the sky dome and we're uh, baking occlusion at a at the high precision level, much more precise than it used to be in, in previous, uh, previous games. So the world looks completely next gen. I mean, we've, we've never even were, we were never even close to achieving this in any other AC game. Plus, we do it in an open world of that size with seamless interiors with no loading anytime.